history is short. Only 400 years ago, the first settlers came through the surf and up the shore, seeking a home in the brooding forests of the new land. Before man could take over, he had to tame the wilderness to his own needs. For the pioneers, the fight against the wilderness was lonely and long. At first, their work made little impression on the vast stretches of mountain, forest and plain. Gradually, as civilization spread, the pattern of nature gave way to the pattern of man. Now, in our time, wilderness is no longer feared. The land is dominated not by nature, but by the expanding pattern of man. And eventually, the culmination of man's pattern, the city. A city has a beauty of its own. Most of us would rather live in a city than anywhere else. But man-made landscapes have little variety. Cities tend to look alike.
glimpses of that other world, zoos and museums, but they miss the meaning and dignity of an animal when it is deprived of its natural background. pattern fulfills most of his needs, but sometimes it's good to get away from noise and pressure, to go back to that other, earlier pattern. There are in Canada pieces of land preserved in their original state, the national parks. Why do we preserve nature? Henry Thoreau said, we need the tonic of wildness. We must be refreshed by the sight of inexhaustible vigor. Visitors to our national parks can still find the tonic of wildness.
Canada's first national park was a small area, 10 square miles, set aside in 1885 to preserve some hot sulfur springs for the people of Canada. In 1887, it was formally established as Rocky Mountains National Park. We now have 18 national parks, but they comprise less than 1% of Canada's total land area. The National Parks Act, passed in 1930, states, the parks are hereby dedicated to the people of Canada for their benefit, education, and enjoyment, and shall be maintained and made use of so as to leave them unimpaired for the enjoyment of future generations. How can we use the parks without spoiling them? To preserve them unchanged for a growing population requires expert planning and management. Public understanding and appreciation are essential too. Park naturalists can guide visitors to the thousands of personal discoveries that reveal the meaning of wilderness. Millions of people visit our national parks each year. Canadians are fortunate. Many of our natural spectacles have been preserved intact in their original surroundings. are wildlife sanctuaries. There would be no buffalo in Canada if it were not for the protection offered by the national parks. Fish are easy to find and nature and solitude go well together. Most of the parks have nature trails designed for visitors who want to go exploring on their own. There are labels to identify trees and flowers, as if one was strolling through an enormous outdoor museum. Wilderness still offers the thrill of discovery, an infinite store of surprises waiting to be rediscovered by each new generation. For children, the secret of wilderness is easy to find. They know how to linger and gaze until they lose themselves in the shifting, flowing patterns of nature.
patches of wilderness scattered from the east coast to the Rockies. We have preserved examples of the kind of country that used to prevail in many regions of settled Canada. Landscape and seascape in the Atlantic provinces. Some of the islands of the St. Lawrence River, the Great Lakes, and the southernmost tip of Canada, Point Pelee. Westward to the parks of the Prairie Provinces. and the parks of the western mountain ranges, the Rockies, the Selkirks, the valleys between. For many of our national parks, we owe a debt to the far-sighted men of the last century who set aside these areas when the country was new. In our turn, we must create reserves and sanctuaries in regions that only now are feeling the first impact of civilization. National parks are museums that we visit to gain knowledge of ourselves, to weigh the value of our civilization against the ageless splendor of the wilderness. <laughs> 